Hey guys, welcome back to Ace Recaps. Today I'm going to be explaining a 2019 Korean sci-fi adventure film titled, Ashfall. The movie starts off as we watch the protagonist of the film, Lee Joon, dismantle an explosive with his partner. He belongs to the bomb squad of South Korea and this seems to be his last project before his retirement from the force. As he's on his way to be with his pregnant wife, a massive earthquake causes the city to tremble. The entire nation comes to a halt as they try to hide from the falling debris, but Lee is adamant on getting to his wife. As he drives through the city, the road in front of him collapses but he manages to escape it by going over a truck. He narrowly escapes the falling buildings but crashes at the last second. As he runs for dear life, a massive structure collapses right over his head but he luckily manages to avoid it. The entire city is in shock as this was the biggest earthquake to happen in over 10,000 years. Kong, a volcanologist, is approached by the special forces after the recent catastrophic event. He's been studying the dormant volcano for the past 10 years and claims that this was just the first of four earthquakes, each worse than the last. They have 75 hours before everything is destroyed. He sees no hope for survival and plans to leave the city as soon as possible but is persuaded by the president to stay back and help his people. He has one solution in mind but it's too far-fetched and is deemed impossible, but the president assures him that they are ready to do whatever it takes. He says that they'd need to detonate a nuclear bomb within the mines of the volcano to stop it from erupting and destroying the nation. But they face one problem, although they have a bomb ready, they lack the uranium needed to detonate the explosion. They come up with a plan to steal what is needed from North Korea, even though this might lead to war between the two countries. Lee is asked to head the bomb squad into the enemy country as that is the only way he gets to save his wife and child. If he doesn't do as commanded, the explosion will kill his loved ones. If he attempts this mission, his wife is promised a safe passage out the country and so he agrees. That night he vows that he'd be back to her soon and directs her on the journey but does not disclose his mission as she'd be terrified to let him go. A special team of military soldiers along with Lee's bomb squad are in charge of carrying out this mission. Joe In Chong is an informant from the country up north. He was working for the North Korean government and managed to track down the nuclear warheads in the country but was unfortunately caught and jailed. Luckily, they implanted him with a GPS tracker. The team's mission is to free the prisoner, find the uranium and detonate the bomb within the mines. As they get on their aircraft to invade the enemy country, they are faced with a massive cloud of ash causing one of the planes to light up in flames. They are all forced to dive immediately. Lee and his team have luckily made it out alive but on further investigation, find out that there were no survivors from the other plane. All the special force military soldiers were unalived in the crash and it's now up to the untrained bomb squad to save the country. There's no going back now and the entire nation is dependent on them. Using the GPS, they drive up to the prison and notice that everyone has evacuated the place due to the eruption. They move ahead and spot Joe locked up in a prison cell. They free him as he promises to get them to the nuclear warheads but he instantly figures out that these people have no combat training making it impossible to complete this mission. He steals the map from Lee and requests to use the washroom where he chops off his hair and cuts out the tracker from his head. He memorizes the map and proceeds to eat it as his insurance policy. On their way, he confesses about the map to the soldiers and they are now forced to keep the prisoner until the mission is completed. As they stop to do their business, Joe attacks one of the soldiers and escapes. They are unable to find him as the GPS tracker was removed earlier. The team is now completely lost in the country of North Korea and try to come up with a new game plan. The town on the outskirts of the country has also been affected by the eruption and the residents are seen evacuating. Lee pieces together some information given out by Joe some time earlier and manages to get close to the place where he used to live. The prisoner has gone back home to fetch his daughter, but he doesn't find her there. He spots his substance abusing wife who claims that his daughter has been sent to live with her brother. He figures out that she's the one who informed the government on his wrongdoings and shoots at her but intentionally misses. The team hears the gunshot and manages to track Joe down and take him back as their prisoner. They continue on their journey and get to an armored facility. They take on gunfire but manage to put down the assailants. Lee and Ju get cornered by them but Ju manages to outsmart the soldiers and take them down. 
They go up to a container and inside it is an elevator. After entering the password, they travel miles below the ground to get to the nuclear warheads. They cuff Ju to a railing and put on their specialized suits and begin dismantling the missiles. They secure the uranium in their personalized detonator but on their final task, the second earthquake hits and everything starts to rumble. On the other hand, Ju fears for his life, breaks free and escapes the room but blocks the door for Lee and his team. As he gets out, he gets a call from a Chinese associate, offering him and his daughter free refuge in the country. When the bomb squad get out of the war room, they find the elevator missing, but just then Ju returns back to help them escape as he now plans on double-crossing the team. Back at home, Lee's wife sets out on her journey to get out of the country. While she is stuck on the bridge due to heavy traffic, the earthquake hits causing a massive tsunami. Being pregnant and unable to run away she is hit by the wave and flushed into the water. Luckily, she manages to survive and swim to safety. The team loads the bomb onto their truck and just before they could drive away, they are all targeted by the US military. Most of the team are injured and unable to get back to complete the mission. The brave Lee manages to cause an explosion and escape from the hotspot along with Ju and the bomb. Unfortunately for him though, Ju tases him and cuffs him to the back of the truck. Back in South Korea, the US military shuts down the mission as they have broken the peace treaty by crossing borders which might now lead to war. They inform the president and everyone is forced to leave and abandon the project of saving the nation. Kong decides to leave the country as it now seems like the only way to survive. On his way, he runs into Lee's wife, but doesn't tell her about her husband's whereabouts. Just before they are about to board the plane, the third earthquake hits, leaving all the aircrafts unusable. As Ju and Lee head towards the Chinese border, they stop for a pee break. Lee uses this opportunity to free himself from the cuffs and drive off. Ju holds onto the truck and they battle for control but unfortunately due to the commotion, they drive off the road and ram into a tree. Lee is now cuffed to the bomb again and they are both seen dragging it through the country. They find a trolley on their way and continue using it to transport the weapon. Dying of thirst, they stop at an abandoned grocery store and have a sip of coke. Suddenly, they are intercepted by the US military and are held at gunpoint. Just then, one of Lee's crew crashes into the store using a bus and the three escape along with the bomb but are chased by the soldiers. As they are driving across a bridge, the earthquake hits and it starts to collapse. The bomb falls out the bus and is held onto by Lee. As the bridge collapses, all the US soldiers are taken out and Lee and his team just make it across in one piece. As they continue traveling, Ju draws out the map and heads off on his way to meet his daughter. Back in South Korea, Kong comes up with a better solution to tackle the last eruption. They need to place the bomb in a different mine but have no way of informing Lee about it. They decide to disobey the US orders and steal the equipment to contact Lee. As they inform him about the change in plans, he is dumbstruck as there's no way of getting there without the original map and he's forced to go back and fetch Ju. As he's running out of time, he has his last words with his wife and heads off on his journey to save the country. At the village, Ju finds his daughter and tries to talk to her but she doesn't utter a word. She doesn't recognize her father and all her family has been unalive due to the earthquake and she stopped speaking after the traumatic experience. Just then, Ju's Chinese associate enters the scene and shoots him after demanding for the bomb. Lee drives in with the explosive in the trunk and surrenders with a white flag. As they go to grab it, the timer on the bomb has already been set to the last eruption and there's no way to stop it now. Having no other option, they are forced to evacuate leaving the weapon behind. Ju says his goodbyes to his daughter, leaves her with one of the soldiers and heads off on their journey along with Lee. It's up to the two of them to save the country or everyone dies. The both of them are seen driving to the mines but the volcanic eruption has begun and they are hit with a fiery rain. They luckily get there, turn on the electricity and load the bomb onto a cart and push it through to the end. As they get there, the extreme heat and steam causes the power to go out. They need to get on the elevator to reach the end of the mine. Lee decides to do the unthinkable by giving his life to save the country. He comes up with the plan of setting up a TNT explosion, which would cause the elevator to crash to the ground, giving him no hope of getting back up again and see his child. Just as he's about to do so, Ju tricks him and locks himself inside the elevator. 
Since he's already been shot, there's no way for him to survive, so he makes Lee promise to take care of his daughter and sets off the explosion. Ju drags the bomb to the end of the mine and sits by it, waiting for it to go off. Lee makes it out of the tunnel and rushes back to safety. As his last tear rolls down his cheek, the bomb explodes and Lee manages to escape just in time. The entire country feels the shockwave of the explosion and celebrate as they've all finally made it. A year goes by and the movie ends as we watch Lee and his family along with Ju's daughter have dinner together celebrating life. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. If you like the video please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a great day.